Well, as you can see, they did in fact give you, Stephen, a well-deserved hero's welcome. On that day, what was it that, that happened and you said, I've got to take action? Because I mean, a lot of people are amazed that you would spring into action as you did knowing you were risking your life to do it. We all in the shooting world say, well, we would do something like this if, if it happened. And we all just kind of shrug it off thinking it never will. Mm -hmm. But you make that decision ahead of time and, and you understand what could happen. Uh, and uh, I think there's a lot of people out there, a lot of shooters and a lot of NRA members that would have done the same thing that I did that day. Every time there's a mass shooting, Stephen, the, the left goes berserk and they say, it's the NRA's fault. How many NRA members have been involved in mass shootings? To my knowledge, I am the only civilian member of the NRA that has been involved in a shooting. And look which side I was on. You were there to stop it, not to I create. I was there to stop it. After two years, there are people who, they're not physically recovered from their wounds, people maybe never emotionally recovered. There's some real needs and, and you're out there trying to help identify some of those and, and let people know. Tell me about some of those. Well, first off, I'm trying to help Chris Workman um, build a handicap accessible home. Chris Workman is the uh, praise ministry leader of our church. Mm. He was shot in the back. He was the last man shot in the shooting and uh, he was paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, Chris, every Sunday, rolls his wheelchair out there and leads the praise band with a guitar and, and sings and stuff, and he's got a precious little daughter that's probably, Evie's probably five years old now. Uh, we have people like uh, uh, Zach Poston. Zach Poston was 17 years old. He was signed up, he was a senior in high school, signed up to be a Marine, hmm. Urah. Uh, got shot seven times. Zach's grandmother crawled on top of him and sacrificed her own life to save Zach. Oh. Zach lived over it, but now he has plates and pins and screws holding himself together and he can't be a Marine anymore. Uh, and he's got over $250,000 worth of medical debt now and he's 18 years old. Stephen, back to the day of the shooting. When you saw him come out of that church, and, and I'm, I'm sure it was a split second that you had to decide what to do, what went through your mind? Well, I think I was cheating that day. <laughs> I was barefoot. I ran across the street. I didn't take time to put shoes on. But I, I believe I was being pushed across the street by the Holy Spirit. Mm. And he was shooting at me, and he hit the truck in front of me, hit the car behind me hit the house behind me, and the Holy Spirit said, don't worry about those, do what I sent you here to do. And I heard that voice, and you know, people think, if you hear God's voice, you're crazy. Well, I, I guess I'm crazy. I, I wanna point out that the weapon that you had and that you used to stop him was the weapon that some people would, as we say, like to get rid of, the AR-15. Had you not had enough rounds in the magazine uh, and, and you were limited to six shots, he would have probably uh, had the best of you. The police department said he had multiple guns and loaded magazines in his vehicle. I hit him a couple of times. He was still able to get into his vehicle. He shot through the window. Uh, I shot, returned one shot through his window and, and, uh, and then he speeded off and he ran down the road. I shot one last shot through his back window and uh, I went through the back window penetrated the driver's side seat and hit him just right of the left shoulder blade. Um, there's no telling where he would have gone. I, I, I believe he had made two trips in and out of the church already. Uh, I believe uh, the Holy Spirit called him out to, to meet me because I yelled out and he mm. came out at that point shooting at me. I think he was coming out, grab some more ammunition and go back in. Before I let you go, you have now decided you're running for county commissioner in Texas. I am. So that may be the most dangerous thing, Stephen, you've ever done. What motivated you to run for office in your community? Well, I'm at the age now where I can step away from my regular work and devote more to my community. And some people suggested that I might run for higher office. And I said, no, I, my community, my county, 
I want to start here at home. I want to make a difference at home. Well, one thing, there's no doubt, you have made already a huge difference. There are people alive today because of you and others who will have at least uh, a life to tell about because your heroic action saved people in Sutherland Springs, Texas. We thank God for you, Stephen. You saved people's lives. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What an honor. I want to express my thanks to Stephen for being here and the gratitude of everyone here for what you did on that terrible day two years ago this very week. To learn more about Stephen Williford and his campaign for county commissioner, or maybe to book him to speak to your group or your community, visit stephenwilliford.com. It's on your screen. Also follow him on Twitter at goodgunguywill.